What is happening? Welcome to the Nick and Alex Baseball Show. My name is Nick and welcome to the show where all our points are fair, nothing is foul, and I'm joined by the absolutely never foul, Alex. Always fair, never foul, always fair. Hey, Bubba, how you doing? Uh, you know, I'm doing all right. I'm doing okay. We have about two and a half weeks left of the regular season, so the chips are mm -hmm. falling where they may. Uh, yes. We don't have as many, I think, exciting races as we normally want with divisions, but no. we've got some exciting things. I mean, I, I feel like it's cheating every week where we're doing Albert Pujols and Aaron Judge watch, mm -hmm. but uh, we got to talk about that some more, and we certainly will, but you know, it's baseball, and I'll be honest with you, we get an extra series of baseball this year. I think we kind of forget what do you mean? that. Because the wild mean? card is not is not mm -hmm. one game on each side. It's a yeah. series. So how do you feel about no. that overall? The fact that the that the uh, wild card is no longer. A oh, I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. I mean, look, I feel like it's going to turn into a one off in most of these. Right. It's a three game mm -hmm. series. Likely that it goes to three games. You know, I think that's the, the highest outcome. Yeah, I mean, sure, you could yeah. say it's a blended square of 50 percent, but no. I, I think you're going to get that that one game playoff anyway, in the most part. And maybe you don't. And those teams deserved it. You know, you have the the worst part of the wild card is that these teams that get knocked out in one game. Now they have a higher chance of surviving. But then you're probably going to still get the electricity of a one game. So I think it's the best of both worlds. I asked you to make it two minutes without bringing up a Punnett square. And you couldn't even do it. Uh, we, we had a whole conversation before this podcast started. But no, Fast, I don't call it a pundit square because we you are a baseball a analyst. Pundit. It's a pundit square. You call it a pundit square. Yes. That's what I always do. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. I, I too, am like, listen, uh, having had a few one-off uh, wild card games, one that went swimmingly, one that did not go quite What was the well, bad one, Fast? I ripped my shirt in half for that one. Um <laughs> Oh, it's right. That was the one the... that, uh, yeah, personally was a very rough time for you. Why? What was personal about it? Wasn't there something? Uh, okay. I didn't want to. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. I'll let you talk about whatever you want about your personal <laughs> life fast. I was <laughs> going through some strife there. I don't remember. Yes, I think so. But all right. I'm not going to be that guy. Uh, you know, Buck still is waiting for uh, mm. Zach Brand to get fully Zach warm Brand. out of the bullpen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but I I am kind of happy. Like it, I understand like why people were into it. Like it did add a kind of fun factor, but it's totally antithetical to what this game is. A three-game series yeah. can still be just as fun. Uh and I and I'm excited to see it happen, but it's like you said, so there is not a single division right now aside from the NL East that has a team within 4 games of first place. Mm. The closest aside the NL East is the uh NL excuse me, the AL Central where the White Sox could still theoretically make a push but this is one of the more kind of boring down to the wire seasons which is not great i mean do you know how far ahead the dodgers are in the division right now i think it's like 20 right it is 22 games oh my lord i mean it's they should win the world series i'm gonna later on to say why someone else should win the world series but we all know it should be the dodgers it i don't know it should be the dodgers it should be, and that's what Dave Roberts guaranteed at the beginning of the season, didn't he? He said that. Yeah, they see, were they are the win. new Yankees. This is what I'm trying to tell everyone: the Dodgers are the new Yankees. Yeah, yeah, oh, they, they, no. they uh, I, I, yeah, maybe they may well be. I, I would kind of be happy to see them win. Uh, is this, is this season making a good case for pivoting towards an NBA-like standings structure? And what do you mean by that? So the NBA standings is one through eight doesn't matter division mm. it's just the top ah. eight teams are going to get in no matter what and that would it's theoretically... kind of like that now though um sort of let's take a look we'll go ahead and take a look at the standings and sure. we can see that one two three four five six so obviously we have six as opposed to eight uh yeah the six would kind of be locked in a little bit more um, but maybe it would open up Baltimore. Uh, the oh, no, this is a Baltimore up. case again. Baltimore, no, yeah, it, Baltimore wouldn't get in. I mean, you could say that Baltimore could win the AL Central, so over yeah. the Guardians essentially is what you're trying to say. I'm, I yeah. guess, I'm also saying too, do we, do we need, do we need divisions anymore? 
Oh, man. Um, no, we don't fast. We need world peace. No more divisions between people. But um, seriously, though, like, are there any? <laughs> What's the, the point? He right? says, look, the, the, the argument for divisions are it's to create. Yeah, to create more um, tension between certain teams and identity for them saying, OK, it is the Yankees against the Red Sox or something more to that or the Astros against the Angels and the Mariners really. Honestly, let's say the Mariners and Angels and Rangers because Astros are like, who are you guys? They just hold out their yeah, hand that, that... and hold the head of their little brothers. But it, it, I understand the case, and I'm not necessarily against it. I think the wild card expanding to six effectively does that, though. Though I'll be really surprised if the Orioles have a better record as the fourth in the AL East than anyone in the AL Central. I'd be very shocked about that. Um, it really should not be the case, and there is... Another weird argument to make that I don't really think I believe in <laughs> that the team that is like the AL Central because they're playing each other a lot. They have yeah. more parity because there isn't a clear winner. But I think that's silly. I don't, I don't yeah. like that. Obviously, the AL East is way better than the AL Central. So sorry for your Orioles fast. I mean, we can keep finding things to be angry about with them, but let's just be happy that they're 76 and 70. No, I, 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 it's not even, it, it really is not even about that. I, I mean, you think about last year, who I think it was, who was it that missed the playoffs despite finishing fourth in the, uh, I think it was Toronto. I mean, it must have been the, really yeah, it must have been the AL East. Yeah, the, the, the Jays missed it, right? The Red Sox, the Rays, and the Yankees all made it. I just like, is, is, is the Red Sox Yankees even a rivalry anymore? Cause to me, it's not. No, no, it's been gone for ages. They used to hate each other. We don't they exactly don't hate each other now. So I can't. And it's the only like, time in my life that I've ever been upset that two people don't hate each other. <laughs> the 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 Dodgers and Giants is still very much a rivalry. There's probably still a sure. big rivalry between the Mets and the Phillies. But yeah, like, Mets I and, guess and Braves too. And Cubs. Yeah, yeah. St. Louis, St. Louis and the Cubs. And... Dodgers and Padres has been interesting with Tatis and everything, but it's been fizzled out a little bit this year. I guess I don't see the same. I I, I hate to bring it up because we're not allowed to, but it's not the same as like a a football where it's like when yeah. Baltimore plays. Pittsburgh or when they play Cincinnati or when they play Cleveland they they oh, hate really? all those teams. I didn't I wasn't aware of any of that. How would you feel this weekend by the way? We're not talking about do? it. Um <laughs> they you know it's really so funny. I, I like I don't really follow too much about what's going on in the fan, uh, the football world. Um I I heard something that happened with the Dolphins and everything. I was like, "Oh, that's nice." It wasn't until today that I realized it was against your Baltimore team. And I just thought, <laughs> "Oh man. Oh, my poor child." Um, now we'll say game. the Mariners and Angels have certainly amped up their rivalry this year, right? Uh, with, yeah. the, uh, with the yeah, the Trout and Julio Rodriguez stuff, and the yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, this is something I'm always conflicted about. No shock to me. I'm like, hey, yeah, let's not encourage teams fighting each other. You know, getting into these brawls and actually being heated and hating each other. That's not fun. I, I don't want that to happen. At the same time. Baseball needs more brawls. They they yeah. need drama. You know they. That's what people want is drama with other people. And I think, yeah, baseball could use more of that. I think you can create it just as much if they did a restructuring and there weren't divisions. I think you would end up finding that like who knows maybe like Pittsburgh gets into a huge rivalry with with the the Yankees or <laughs> with their owner. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I, I don't know. I think it could be fine. I mean, we also never really talked about the fact that next year, or maybe we have, that they're already kind of making a move that would, uh, that a, a non standing structure would benefit or is benefited by in the schedule next year, right? Where you're playing every single. Team. Oh, right. We haven't, we haven't talked about this yet. Right. Yeah. I think that is such a we we dunk on the league plenty and justifiably so, but that is such an easy, fantastic win, man. I love that. I think it's great. I, I understand other people being upset about it, being like it feels so random and just there's no attachment to the team you're facing. I think it's awesome. Otani will be against every single team, right? Throw Otani into every single TV set, right? Like, let people know who this guy is. You know, if you're you're on the yeah. Pirates or something, you haven't faced Otani. I don't know if they have, but right. Like, Pittsburgh audience should know who that player is. Same with Aaron Judge. And that's sure. how you get uh, more popularity across the sport. The best thing that baseball can do is elevate the stars so that you will watch a game yeah. that is not your hometown team. This is, I think, the biggest differentiator between the NFL and baseball. If you put it like that, where you're a Baltimore fan, you will watch other games, whatever the Monday night football game is or 
the one, you know, your, your Baltimore games at one, you'll watch the four o'clock. Like it doesn't matter. You're just watching that game. And it's not like that in baseball. If you're a Royals fan, you're going to watch the Royals game and you're not going to watch the, the Marlins against the Phillies. You just aren't going to do that. I mean, I am because that's going to be Alcantara versus Wheeler, but you know, it's, it's different for, for the casual fan. So the more that we can acclimate these players to, to the local fans, like that's great. So I'm a, I'm a huge uh, advocate for this. To your point, too, it's, it's very similar to the kind of NBA model. A lot of the fans that I talk to of the NBA, and some would say their biggest problem right now is it's actually so player oriented, right? Mm. You are going to watch, you're like, I know more people who are, you know, um, uh, uh, Steph Curry fans than they are necessarily a fan of a particular team, or they follow KD wherever he goes. They used to follow mm -hmm. Carmelo Anthony, or they follow, sure. you know, whoever. Why Carmelo? Uh, I'm just gonna end. <laughs> and people used to love him in New York. Um, the, the thing is, like, they, the MLB obviously has that problem. I know plenty of fans who are like, who are watched AL and they're like, yeah, I couldn't name a single player on the Colorado right. Rockies. Now, I, a lot of fans of the team probably couldn't name a single player because why would you want to watch them half the time? Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but wow, I, fast. I come on, come on fast. It, when it comes to marketing too, it's really beneficial, right? Because uh, an NBA game can market its Le it's LeBron versus Giannis and it doesn't matter who the teams are and you can't really do that here you can't say it's oh it's O'Neal Cruz versus I, I don't know like uh, Javier Baez right a lot of people just aren't as familiar with the name value they're more familiar with the organizations so I sure. think it's a really really good step forward so I'm excited absolutely I I'm, I'm a huge fan of that and look the Rockies have Ramon Marquez yes okay that's true. all that's right true. uh so so and other things Ryan. that we're going to Oh, yeah. Well, maybe like what, like 10 games or so this year. Um, we have to talk about Aaron Judge. We have to do this. Uh, Why? and no. No. yes, we do. Yes, we do. Why? Don't say no. Every because week. We have to. This is historic. This is like the thing in baseball right now, fast. And this is the baseball show. All right. As much as you like to ignore this man exists, I think this is incredible. He's at 59 home runs right now. He could mm -hmm. he could do it under 154. If he has that 60th before that, that's Ruth's record at 154 games. That was a huge point of contention with Roger Maris. Uh, and then after that, I mean, 61, 62 could fall after. He's doing some amazing things. He could win the triple crown. Now we're even in triple crown watch as he's just points away, a few points away from Luis Arias of the uh, of the twins. I want to show you this. This is this is a, a point of contention I saw on on Twitter. And I'm curious what your thoughts are on this fast. Uh, we have this image. This is what happened. Aaron Judge in this game against the Twins had five barrels in one game. It was the only time in the Stackhouse era that a single player in one game had five recorded barrels. This image was posted um, on Twitter after showcasing the five pitches that Judge hit. Two of them are right there in the middle of the plate, a curveball and a slider that just hung. Another three sinkers that are not necessarily all on the edge, but they seem more hittable than your average average pitches that you see in a given at bat. And the argument was the amount of good pitches or in the heart of the plate that Judge has seen has been above average or really, I think it was he is the ninth highest. Only eight other batters have seen more pitches in the heart of the plate this year. Do you think that's a point against Judge? Do you think that he's been... You know, he's been a bit lucky to be able to do what he does. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's I think it's still one of the hardest things to do in the world. I, I don't understand why it's happening. It seems like it just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know if he's gone and talked to every pitcher and said, listen, if you keep doing this, I'm going to sign a mega deal and I'll slide you a couple hundred. Thousand wow. Dollars. Wow. Uh, fast. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't want to take away from him. I don't want to detract. I don't want to detract from from what he's doing. Unbelievable. You know Mike Petriel had a really good article that came out earlier where it's like it's more than just the home runs, right? It's 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 I mean, as you mentioned, he's he's a, a point away from being the triple crown leader. Um, so, no, I don't necessarily think it is luck. I think even with the pitches that he's getting, there is a remarkable there's been a remarkable consistency to him. We're not talking about a hot first half or second half. We're talking about a blazing hot season. I did think it was kind of interesting that the um so there's been a lot of talk about his OPS plus right his OPS plus is currently two it's over 200 right yeah it's 213 which is uh, oh, about more about top 50 um that's ever. not even top 50 ever 
Yeah. What's kind okay. of surprising though is it is not the highest in even the past two seasons. Really? Yeah. I, I, so I, I think, I mean, I don't want, again, I'm not trying to detract from him too much. I'm just focusing on the fact that I keep seeing his OPS plus his OPS plus, uh, someone had in their age 21 season. So that might be a dead giveaway, a higher OPS plus at the end of the year. Um, but they only had, uh, 196 played appearances. Um, I mean, was that in 2020 or, uh, yeah, 2020. Yeah. Okay. I mean, was that Tatis? I assume no, 21 years was, old or over live well, Guerrero. It, uh, it was Juan Soto. Juan Soto. Oh, Juan Soto. Of course. I mean, oh, man. yeah. So, it, but yeah. with with a qualifier, uh, it is kind of interesting that that uh, Baseball Reference, I guess, it, it includes it. I guess it's because it's the 2020 season. No, I right. guess they also have a bunch of others. Oh, this is actually really kind of unfair. They have a lot. Oh. Of, like, <laughs> This guy, Jesse Douglas in 1944 had a 221 OPS plus with 85 plate appearances. I don't know why we're including. No, so so let's like, let's uh let's look at 600 plus. 600 right. Plus. Let's see a full full season. That's the real impressive part, is that Judge isn't just having a hot stretch, he's having a full season of this success, right? I mean, we've we've seen hot stretches before. The an ode to Brian LaHare um is the one that I always go back to. I think that was like what 2014. Something along those lines of how well Brian LaHare went off uh, in the first half. Emilia Bonifacio, I believe, with a 400 average in, in April. Um, so what do you got? For the minimum of 600, where do you think it lies? Um, I think it lies beneath. I, I'm i going to go with 15th. 15th, 18th. Oh, 15th. I was close. All right. That, that, yeah. that's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, without right. a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, I think now it's difficult to make the case for Rotani to win MVP after after it, the fact that he's kept it up. If anything, he's actually gotten even better. Um, someone who was it? There was there was a really good. Uh, oh, that's what it was. If he has one more, I heard this from an ESPN commentator. If he has one more multi home run game, yeah, okay, he can have more or as many home runs as JD Martinez. So yeah. if he has one more multi home run game, that'll give him as many multi home run games. <laughs> That's as many as oh, and JD man. Martinez has 11 home runs on the year. That's remarkable. Well, I mean, I think that's more remarkable that JD Martinez has 11 home runs on the year, but yeah, but yeah, but that's right. It's an interesting way to, to phrase that. Um, I still don't know where I stand on this. I mean, it's so clear that Aaron judge is just the best. <sighs> You know, and in a normal situation, it's Aaron Judge. It's just what Otani. It, it's so remarkable. It, it, it's stupid. We just don't know how to properly quantify what Otani does. It's so easy for us to quantify Aaron Judge's production. I think there's something to be. I, I can't. I don't know how to say it. Of like a pitcher and a hitter that are both just so absurdly above average. Like top fifteen hitter and top fifteen pitcher is so stupid. That's so dumb. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There will be I, guys who get MVP votes that are worse hitters than Otani. Yeah. Think about that. I, I don't understand the la like if it's been done before, if there's been precedent for a co MVP. I know you're a fan again? of that. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it doesn't make sense. Like the whole, like one to rule them all is so arbitrary and it's not like, like, it, it has so much interesting and good debate around it. I don't necessarily think it's like, oh, this is 100% clear cut, this person. Right, yeah. So, so And it doesn't, it, in my mind, it doesn't make either of those seasons, seasons any less special. It just says both of these guys did historic things and they should be recognized as such. Sure. And uh, last two things on, on Judge here. So uh, Apple TV is, is hosting mm -hmm. their Friday night game, right? It's, it's the Yankee game. It's Friday night. And keep in mind, we're recording this, of course, a Tuesday evening. Um, Judge could be hitting a historic home run Friday night. Apple TV, not the Yankee broadcast whatsoever. Limited audience on Apple TV. Um, Apple has refused to to change or swap this game. I mean, obvious reasons. <laughs> Why? You know, from Apple's business standpoint, yes. I mean, from like, you know, the baseball purist perspective, you know, the good thing is like, yes, allow MLB Network to air this game or something. You know what I mean? Um, but no, they're like, absolutely. They're like, we're not budging on this. Uh, how do you feel about it? I mean, a lot of people are upset about this. Yeah, of course. But like, listen, 
it's so convenient. Maybe this is just my the experiences that I've had in corporate America. Like it's so convenient for me to pull up my shirt a little bit, slap my tummy, grab a little a little four you- loco, and watch a game and say, "Why they won't take this game? It's a historic game. They better put it on all the television channels." It's easy for me to do that, and it's easy for me to get upset and say, "Make it work." There's I don't know if it's easy Apple. for me to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's so much money this is not gonna happen it's not feasible it stinks yeah. i understand it it's in, it's unfortunate in no world in my opinion maybe i'm totally wrong maybe mlb will be able to say okay we will give you x amount of dollars to be able to air this game for everyone to see it sure but i just considering how binding the contracts are about blackouts yeah. You mean to tell me that, that, that they're going to be able to do something here? I don't know. I don't see it happening. I understand why people are upset, but it's just it's just business, I feel like. I know. It, well, it's it's I think it's part of the reason why we're all so upset about these exclusive deals that mm-hmm. were coming out, you know? Um, and I think we if we were be able to we should have articulated this better. Be like, hey, there's gonna be some historic things, it's gonna be on Amazon Prime or something. Um, Tommy Lasorda has a fantastic point in the, in the Twitch chat. The Yankees should rest Judge on Friday. Just that rest him. So <laughs> that would be so good. Oh, that would be that would be something else. Um, all right, and, and last thing, how much do you pay the man? Yeah, this is this is a really interesting conversation. I feel like. We we had this uh, we had this conversation a little bit last week because you're not paying past performance, right? You're paying future performance. Sure. So you're you're paying a 31 year old player who is um what slightly above average defensively. I guess. Uh, yes. No. I mean, he's supposed to be in right field, and he moved to center. Um, yeah. Right field, he's well above average. But he's playing center okay. as he had to. Now here's some Bader's back in the lineup. So, yeah. So we could say an above average defender, but a guy who is also, I I don't think that like under the categories of body frames that age well, six foot seven, <laughs> two eighty. I love that book, by the way. Body frames that age well. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's just like uh, George. Who's it? Russell Simmons? No, George. What's his name? Was it Russell Simmons? No. What are you what thinking? What of? are you doing? <laughs> Who am I no, no, Stanza? I don't know. <laughs> no, the old workout guy, Gene. Russell, oh Russell Simmons. Yeah, sure. He's one of oh, them. Is it Russell Simmons, the workout guy? Yeah. Yes. Is that who I'm thinking of? You're thinking of Gene. Yeah, you're confusing no, Gene no, Simmons no, no, and Russell no, Simmons. No, 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 wrong, <laughs> wrong. That's it's not Russell Simmons. It's not Russell Simmons. It's Richard Simmons. Oh, Richard Russell Simmons. Simmons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Russell Simmons is the person who founded Def Jam Records. Like, uh, uh, let's okay. Like, I know it's not Russell Simmons. Uh, <laughs> very different people. Russell and Richard Simmons are very. I'm sure very Russell gets it all the time. People. It's like Ryan and Brian Adams. Um, I doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that would be the cover of the album. Would would be would be Shrek and Richard Simmons. Uh, anyway, th- those th- he's not necessarily going to theoretically age well. Uh, I think we both agree that he's probably not going to have another two twenty OPS plus season, right? Yeah, he might um, next year if he's healthy. Yeah, if he's healthy, that's the other thing too. So he'll probably end the year. He's going to end the year with a no. He might end the year with a career high plate appearance amount. Uh, Six seventy eight is currently his highest. Back in twenty seventeen, didn't have more than five hundred in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Obviously, didn't do it in twenty twenty for apparent reasons. Um, but do you still make him the highest paid player in baseball? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do I, I wouldn't. I, I I don't I wouldn't I mean hey, look I, I just watched the captain which is fantastic Randy Wilkins friend of the show um absolutely killed this I, I was I was so impressed by it uh, I I finished it today mm. and there are, there are a lot of things about it that I really really enjoy I really enjoy him talking about being an owner of the the Marlins um I I also enjoyed just getting a sense of okay here here's the arbitration I've totally forgot about this because I was kind of like removed from baseball, but what I, I, my perception of the game completely changed when I started doing pitcher list and everything. But if you guys remember, I believe it was the end of the 2000, was it the 2009 
year or something along those lines, the final contract of Derek Jeter. So uh, he had, he went to an arbitration case or like a, or um, oh man. Okay. Two parts. I'm sorry. There was the arbitration. And then there was also the free agent signing and how the Yankees really uh, worked him. I, uh, and didn't show any sort of loyalty to Derek Jeter. And they really pushed back on this. Um, so, and it makes me think like the Yankees, I don't know, do they need judge? Like the value of Derek Jeter at that time was getting the, the butts in the seats. Right. And how much like having Derek Jeter there made the Yankees money less of just like getting a winning ball club, like just having Derek Jeter as a face of their, of their product. Right. Aaron judge does that. Uh, Aaron judge is such a glue for this Yankee team, regardless of what you want to say about the value of the contract later. That's where my side of it, my mind is like, yes, you do not go and pay Aaron judge. This is the prototypical. You you get a couple years and then it's a, uh, albatross at the end of the deal, right? It's, it's very, very standard how that goes. Um, at the same time, there's this value that isn't getting calculated into it of Aaron judge is the Yankees right now. You take Aaron judge out of that team. Who's the face of the Yankees? You know, I, 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 I don't, who? Garrett Cole. Cole? Yeah. I don't, I don't, they don't want that. You know, it's Aaron judge and they need, yeah. you gotta bring him back. You gotta do that. Anyway, whatever it is, you pay the dang man. You're the Yankees. You can afford this. Have the Albatross contract at the end of the thing. Figure that out later. You have to pay him whatever he wants. That That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, Maybe he ends up in San Francisco. I, I want him to be a pirate. But that's just me. I, I know you want um, to be a part. I'm looking at their payroll, and I think they're actually pretty low. Another 13th, yeah. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be crazy. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to image of the week now. But before we do, we're gonna take a quick break. I had to get that in before you could interrupt me. I was gonna snuck it, it in. You. I just I just want to sneak that in. All right. Um. I oh man that, that's pretty good Shelly a judge's home run versus Pulos. um here hold on <clears throat> hey everyone thanks for watching live this is what happens in our break <laughs> <laughs> and we're back uh Shelly versus straight manager here at pitcher list if you don't know where you should uh has a great question inside of the chat uh before we move on to image of the week judges home runs versus Pujols home runs which one should be broadcasted more fast how do you feel um oh man that's a great question like so uh, let's put it this way like if you could only watch one live or which yeah. one should get more airtime or what, what's the, yeah what's the, what's, that, what's that's pretty much the idea which should be which what should be the bigger focus of like okay cool we're going live to this player's at bat like which player mm -hmm. should it be more love it yeah okay so both are about to happen you're going live to one of them you have to go i think you have to go pools oh wow no i'm judged yeah i, I don't i'm absolutely no, I don't think question Wait, all right. I so don't team see because I don't think the the like the number seven hundred is ju it's just a like a round number, Excuse you me? know? No, 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 no. But, but just just symbolically, the the achievement like Pujols is already uh third now, right? Mm -hmm. There's no one. There's no one in between. He's past a rod. He's not going to get to Ruth at seven hundred. No, he's he's, so. he's fourth. He's fourth. Who's the third? I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, Bonds. Andrew. Okay, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, fine. But fourth, yes, he's fourth right now. I'm sorry, I just kind of blocked that out. It's, it's Hank Aaron and I uh, and, and Babe Ruth. So what I'm getting at is him sitting 700 isn't separating him from anybody else. That's just kind of a personal achievement of making it a nice number because we love round numbers of 700. Aaron judges is an actual in-season achievement that people have been trying to go up the steps of for so long and they've been falling down. And Judge is right there. And that, to me, is a more special thing. Um, this is, we I, like, Pujols is already at a point of celebration. He's achieved this celebration. He is fourth now. Like, it's insane. If he hits 700 or not, what he's done is, that is historic. It's there. The extra one or two, whatever it is, to get to 700 at this point, is, I believe he's at 697 or maybe 698. But you understand yeah. my point of, that's just for the round numbers judges is actually like no to defeat maris you know and get to that 62 you know without the steroid era like that hasn't been done 
And that's more exciting to me. So, yeah, he's at 698 right now. I, I What Judge is doing is not breaking any league record at all. Uh, well, okay. So, I mean, we've had this discussion about, like, uh, how much weight do we put into Bonds and McGuire and Sosa? Totally. But right? it's the league record without a doubt. No matter what, it is the league record for most home runs in a season. It is officially recognized in the history books. League sure. record, 73 home runs in a season. Uh, it, 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 all he is doing is uh, officially would be breaking the Yankees single season record, which is great, but it's oh, the man. Yankees single season oh, record. Come on, fast. You, Judge, don't, you, you don't put any weight on 62. You, because you're mean, not a Yankee I, I think, fan. You don't care about the team record I, you know I, I no one cares I mean, about it, team records i i understand it but i think comparatively to a guy joining a club with three people with, he's already in that he's already in that no, club not. more he's than alex rodriguez 700. is that is that club he's not in the 700 home run club no no he's but he's in the 698 home run club but it doesn't matter. That's not a club. No one goes to Cooperstown and says, show me the 698 <laughs> home run club, It's a round baby. number. It's the, uh, 62 is this is this heralded number of, Stop. but it's, a, in, yeah, of course, uh, come on. How can you not care heralded, about that? 62 it is. is. You can't say, you can't say, you can't say uh, 700 is just a round number. 62 is just an even number. It's easy to just count. No, 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 no. Because it's one more than the, the record that stood for so long. <laughs> no. They're like that actually that. is like, oh my gosh! I think there's <laughs> like it's so so it's so funny to me doing this right now because I'm thinking about everybody listening to this and just knowing that they think you're ridiculous too. <laughs> no, that's 100 percent not the case. I think they're literally going to listen. Man, to I mean, like, Wait. It's such dirty tactics, Nick. This is this is the worst. Wow, I'm so like, sorry. How would you, you not want to be in the club with Barry Bonds, Henry Aaron? You're already in the club. Movie. You're already there. He's not. He's not. He already oh did it. He already went over Alex it. Rodriguez. That's not in the club. It's called the 700 home run club. 697, Fertree says, was the important home run, and he did that. Oh, my he over is... he, he went above Alex Rodriguez. I mean, look, That's I'm not saying it's it. not cool to get to 700. I'm not saying that. We're talking about which is more, which more weight and which is the one I'm giving airtime to. It's Judge getting to 62. It's wrong. Here's the other argument for it. Just like you have seen people hit more than 62 home runs before, you will see other instances in which people will hit more than 62 home runs again. And you will, in all likelihood, not see 700 home we, we runs we ever again. We don't know that we're going to see 62 again. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's more of a likelihood than you would see 700 again. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, I will say this. Um, if you want to make the case that you think they're going to see 62 again, then why wouldn't you see 700 again? Because that means that you have a higher rate of home runs, essentially, in baseball, right? Because the odds are you would see 62 again, considering how many people have hit over 62. But my point is, then, if there are a lot more people that have a higher chance of 62, that means that you're going to eventually get to 700. If more people hitting more home runs, it means a higher chance of people That's having not the case, careers. Case. As, that's not the case. Is as was illuminated in a fantastic Reddit post. They took all the current home run leaders, their age and where they were mm -hmm. at, and how they would project to be, uh, and how long their career would have to be. And considering sure. how late guys come up, uh, mm -hmm. and how many injuries that they're dealing with, and how inconsistency, uh, how uh, uh, how little they play comparatively, mm -hmm. it, it's just in all likelihood probably not going to happen again. Yeah, uh, if you, if you're suggesting that they're going to be more 62 home run seasons, that means the home run rates are going up, which means there's a higher chance of a more historic or milestone home runs. Okay, we've done this a long time. Thanks. Good question, Shelly. Good it's a, question. It's a great question. It's a great question. Uh, and my God, I've never disagreed with Fast more. Um, we're going to go to image of the week. Um, Fast, which one of these is yours? <laughs> Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm uh, right now. Right now. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to tell you this one is yours because you want, you're not making a decision. I this I thought this was a pretty cool thing you sent me. <laughs> uh, this is um, of Jacob deGrom. And uh, look at this. I, I, I You sent me this. I was like, yes, this is, that's right. This is the perfect representation of why Jacob deGrom. That's Aaron Judge. I'm, I'm putting up Aaron yeah, Judge. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> that's that's Aaron Judge because I'm, I'm an idiot. 
But this is a perfect representation of what makes Jacob deGrom good. Oh, it's because I switched through it like that. That's what happened. Uh, all right, here we are. Look at this. You're going to see all these release points in the same exact spot for his four-seamer changeup and slider. And this is from September 18th. Why'd you send me this? It's beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't think, I'm very curious as to how much it matters because I really used to think that this mattered a lot. And then someone DM'd me from driveline and they were like, this doesn't matter. Like if it, if it's like within a couple of like inches of one another, it really doesn't matter all that much mm. um, to a batter. They, they're not going to be able to pick it up as effectively. Like it, unless it's like a huge difference, like it's right. just not going to be uh, uh, that crazy, but still, I have to believe that um, there's some there's some benefit to it from a pitching perspective. And this is just so rare and beautiful. And it's just one of the many things that proves that he's inhuman. Well, yeah, to me, it's the it's the lack of variability. It's just that this is a man locked in. He just does the same thing every time. You know, you don't see like, yeah. oh, that's what he does on a slider or his changeup or his fastball. Like, no, it's it's the same thing all the time. And it's less about the deception to the hitter. It's just more of. This is why he's able to command it so much, you know, because he's just always repeating the same stuff. I mean, he needs to make an adjustment. He makes that one adjustment in that one place and everything else is the same. Uh, that is what makes Beautiful. Jacob deGrom Beautiful. so good. One, one element of it. He has a lot of elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is going to be a long tangent. So the, I, I came across up, this. Yeah. Buckle, buckle up. All right. Um, I, I saw this and I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't know. MLB released their food fight power rankings. Mm. Okay. Which I took as just like the best foods of stadiums. And I'm going to read this off because th I think this is a little shocking to me. We have one is the Philly cheesesteak from the Phils, obviously. The Johnsonville ultimate bratwurst from mm. the Brewers. The Skylight Chili Cheese Conies in Cincinnati. The world champions burger. I don't, that one I think is the most surprising one to me. It's a burger. Yeah, it's a burger. <laughs> it's a burger. That's in Atlanta. The Lobel steak sandwich at Yankee Stadium. I've never had it. I didn't even know it was there. I've been to Yankee Stadium so many times. I didn't yeah. know that was the thing. The cold lobster roll in Boston. Boog's barbecue sandwich. Hopefully you can speak to that in Baltimore. The General mm -hmm. So's chicken tender bucket in New York. What? No. Okay. I mean, if they are really doing this as like a food fight, like you throw it, but then the burger, I don't understand. Ancho chili brisket quesadilla in Seattle. And number 10 is the brisket borracho fries in San Diego. Uh, what are your quick thoughts on these food fight power rankings from MLB? I love I so I believe these are tied into the event that they do now, which is like at a big convention center. They have like the stadiums bring their foods, and I think sure. that's a lot of fun. I think uh -huh. that's cool. I think this list is a little bananas. A little um, well, they're actually it's there are nope. no bananas on here. Yeah, maybe there could be. <laughs> um, I like I can't speak. I've I've been to all of these stadiums, but two, and I cannot i don't really have any recollection aside from maybe the skyline chili of being like oh this is like oh i had this and it was unbelievable philly cheese takes a cop out like that's come on stop like it it, it it stop um you know what i had in milwaukee that was actually fantastic i think i already talked to you about this a long time ago it was a full like 16 ounce or bigger bloody mary that you drank through a hollowed out slim jim that's what should be on the list and I'm you're gonna, sorry you're, you're gonna what Wait, wait, yeah. time out, time out yeah. through a, yeah. a hollowed out Slim Jim. Yeah. And you were the one that was against the hot dog beer. That was, yeah. So is there any difference? Is there yeah, any yeah, yeah, difference? Yeah. No, yeah, I think so. I think so. There isn't. I you got so. beef and the liquid. So. It's no, because the liquid's a big difference. Come on, an ale is not a, a Bloody Mary. A Bloody Mary is already spicy and hot and delicious. No, 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 um, no, no. no Mm -mm -mm. You're gonna love this. Mm -mm. Gonna love alcohol, this. alcohol, and and beef. Alcohol, alcohol. That's a. It's our next stuff. podcast. Um, alcohol and beef. I think Boogs is overrated. I think I Boogs is think overrated. Boogs I don't even know what's in this. I just assumed it was Boogs Shiambi, but I assume not now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, uh, <laughs> I just love Shiambi showing up. Says, "Hey guys, I've got a barbecue sandwich. I'm gonna sell it to Baltimore, and then I'm yeah, gonna, gonna go to Chicago." It. 
No, no, no. It's famous Oriole Boog Powell. has got a right field stand uh, right in front of the warehouse on Utah Street. Um, mm. I don't think it's that good. The lines are always crazy. I always think the barbecue is a little bit dry. Although what they do oh, wow. have wow. is That's... a mac and cheese hot dog with Old Bay. And that, to me, is What's fire. Old Bay, Fast? Old Bay is... is uh, it's. Oh, have you seen Dune? Have you seen Dune? Yeah, because it's the spice. Old... The spice flows. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I got you, buddy. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. The General Sells Chicken Tender Bucket. I, I mean, like, look, I, I've been to many a game at City Field, many a game at Yankee Stadium. Both of these things, the Bell's Think Sandwich, the General Sells Chicken Tender Bucket, I... I have never interacted with this. Pat Lafrida's is what I go to at, at, at Mets. Mm. Actually, I do a whole tour. I get there early. I go around and I inspect every yeah. single food option and I just see where the where the stomach takes me. And not so once is... have I considered the General So's chicken tender bucket or the Bell Steak Sandwich. Ditto. Although, who did we go with last time when we had a pitcherless meetup at the Mets game and they got that ice cream that we all oh, ended you're up talking getting. about the Wowful. So, yeah, yeah. have I told you the story of the Wowful of like we had this picture list meetup in 2000 and I, uh, it must've been 2019 um, where we had, you know, we had this, this Mets game, maybe it's 2021 and <laughs> it was fireworks night and we had like a good 15 people there. It was a wonderful time. And Ben Brown and Chris Weber, Chris Weber is our, uh, is our community man manager. And then we have our, I think our support manager and then Ben Brown, our gifts manager here at picture list. And around the seventh inning, or maybe at the end of the sixth, they say, we're going to go get a waffle. And a waffle is like a waffle that's wrapped like a cone. It's not a waffle cone because that's harder. This is actually just a mm. waffle that they just twist. And then they stick ice cream in it and then put like, you know, other things on it. Like the chocolate one will have like marshmallows and some, some syrup on it or whatever. Right. So we don't see them. And the game ends and they're still online waiting for their waffle. But then it's fireworks night. And there's another like 20, 30 minutes. They got to roll out those fireworks. You know, the whole place goes dark. We're all waiting in anticipation. Then pop, pop, pop. These things go off. And there's Ben Brown and Chris Weber like crouching down, trying to see it with the in between <laughs> everything. And they can't do it. They were the last ones in the stadium. I kid you not. Everyone left after fireworks. But because they had already paid for their wellful. These employees had to make them for them. And so that's there they great. are. They got rainbow because that's all the ice cream that was left. And oh, they had these rainbow route waffles as we were the last people to leave City Field. And they said it was it's worth not, it. So. So they yeah. did say it was yeah. worth it. It was quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I know you've only been to, I think, what, like three or four. You're, you haven't been to a lot of ballparks, right? I have not. Um, but do you have a tradition when you go to a new ballpark? Do you have a thing that you do? I have to walk around. I need to like yeah. really take it in. I want to see the park from as many angles as I can. Yeah. Right. I want to like, I want to be able to be at field level and look out there. Don't only see sit, but I need to really get a feel for, uh, for the grass and everything. I want to see what it's like. And the nosebleed, see how the seats, I, I kind of want to explore in a game. I normally watch the first couple innings, get there early, at least an hour. If it's a new mm. stadium, I uh, watch a few innings and maybe take a tour around all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I get there probably an hour and a half early. Uh, try to, always have to get a hot dog, no matter what. Always have to get a hot dog. <laughs> always, always a hot dog. Well, I don't, but, but the thing is, a hot dog is, it's uniform, right? It's always the same. It's a hot dog. Uh, I don't know. Dodger dogs hit a little bit differently. Um, they're, 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 they're okay. Uh, you can tell the people who really take care of the hot dogs in the, in the stadium as opposed they to they really take care of them. They tuck them yeah. in at night. You know, yeah, they really, they really put a little like glass of water on the bedside table. Yeah. The boiling hot dog water is like Evian or like, you know, some, like, some high end water. As opposed you to, see like, them at the, the edge with their arms out, relaxing in the hot water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Roll me. <laughs> Uh, roll me again, flip me. It's that uh, mountain that. air, you know. I I used to have a tradition where I would buy like one thing in the team store, and then I mm. went into a few rest, uh, stadiums where I was like, "There's just nothing here for me." Well, right, the uh, Reds, right? The Reds, the Reds actually, I think might have been the last one that spoiled it for me. Although I will say, I tried to do the same thing at Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium, 
shockingly a very beautiful third oldest stadium in baseball, um, but still looks contemporary, still has a, a really good balance between um, old and new. The merchandise, I think, is terrible. It's all contemporary. Like, I really wanted to get a, a Sandy Koufax uh, Dodgers jersey. Um, now, obviously, huh. that's not the first thing that you would think of. So, And it wasn't just the fact that there wasn't a Sandy Koufax jersey, but it wasn't anyone, really, uh, aside from current roster. And that kind of shocked me, considering their illustrious history. Now, was there Vince Scully? There, there was some Vince Scully merch, but there wasn't like okay. a Vince Scully like jersey or okay. anything. Okay, okay. Um, um, you know, Koufax is how I, I swear in the SP Roundup now. What do you mean? I say for the love of Koufax is what I mm. say. Yeah, nice. he has become Very our. Good. Yeah, I I mean, I just feel like, you know, it's Koufax, man. It's Koufax. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you couldn't find a Votto jersey was always yeah, sitting at in Cincinnati. Is that that's ridiculous. Couldn't find a Votto jersey in Cincinnati like a year or two after he signed his major deal. And then what? I sent like a tweet about it being like, this is kind of crazy. I'm in Great American Ballpark and I can't find a Joey Votto jersey. And then went to the counter and asked uh, what they, you know, if they had it. And they were like, are you the person that sent the tweet? And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, what are you dying? I'm so sorry. Uh, you have, like, you, yeah. you have influence fast. You got to know your years ago where you are in this world. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a, that was years ago. Imagine now. It's not that I have influence. It's that they have a very good social media team. That was. <laughs> oh, did you add um, the Reds? Oh, you bet your ass I did. Uh, like, uh, oh, on, excuse you, even... you. You bet your Sorry. Kofax you did. You bet your Kofax. <laughs> uh, you couldn't believe it. Uh, and then they were like, someone went across the street to the warehouse for you. To get oh, them my together. Lord. Oh, and you're like, no, I don't want it. You know, and uh, and that was that. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think I... I don't know. I'm not actually one to get jerseys. I really, I know it's it, for whatever reason. It's just not me um, to go after like the Jersey Jersey stuff. It took me a long time to get like a Yankee Jersey. And I was really thinking about it for a long time. Who am I going to get? Who am I going to get? And I believe I got it in 2006 or 2006 or 2007. I was like, I'm good here. I got one. Can you guess who I got? Can you guess the player back then? 6 2007, 2007 yeah paul o'neill oh no 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 no! i actually had one when i was a kid i actually had a jersey of paul o'neill he was like my favorite did you really player. oh yeah he paul o'neill david player? cohen david cohen and paul o'neill are my two favorite guys yeah and i'm so lucky that they're um, the broadcasters now but yeah yeah seriously i was gonna say but no those, um, this was okay. a guy that was playing in 2006 2007 for the yankees and like i would get the jersey of them right i i wouldn't just you know i thought long and hard about this one Will Nieves. Okay. I feel like you're not Jason, thinking. Uh, Jambi, 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 Jambi. Jambi. Yeah, that wouldn't be me. So think, no, what would Nick Pollock do? He would really think this out, right? It, yeah. Uh, if I mean, I would think it would be, I was, I don't think Pettit was there. Oh, Musina. Ah, okay. So I wanted a shirt that I could invest in. I was like, oh, I'm going to wear okay. this for a long time. So I got a job at Chamberlain. <laughs> ah, very lovely. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Oh, God. He was the savior fast. He was. He was the he was savior. savior. I'll never forget okay. him him walking off the mound uh, in, in the ALCS against the uh, against the Orioles, having given up. Oh, a bunch proud, of uh, proud note to, to Furtree here who predicted Jabba. He gets me fast. You don't. Oh, he got it. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm by sorry. the way, I realized all this talk about pitching. I did. I did something wrong here today. You didn't show the pitcher at the top. I didn't. So I'm going to do it right now. I have one. I didn't. I didn't like go oh, into this without one fast. Oh yeah. Who is this mystery pitcher fast? Oh my. This is okay. Am I making this better or worse? I don't know. Uh, who is this guy? He has a 108 innings pitch this year. He's four and twelve. 497 year rate, 126. So if you're not thinking very highly of them, however, 30% strikeout rate, 9% walk rate, 30% CSW, a 98.8 mile per hour fastball, 15% swing strike rate, 24% hard contact, and a low 32.2% ground ball rate. Do you know who this pitcher is fast? I have a guess based off the velocity, but I don't know if his ERA is that bad. Mm, who do you think this is? Is it Hunter Green? That is correct. Oh, that nice. Is correct. It is Hunter Green. I mean, 
the velocity is the, is the big thing. Giveaway, I, yeah. I I think it uh, dead giveaway. That's such a good okay. Um, the the, the striker at thirty percent and to see such a horrible year, Ray, um, with that. Um, this is the quintessential cherry bomb, and I do wonder if this can be tweaked. I mean, slider usage has improved. It's been better when he has come back. He just came back um, from the IL now. Or something uh I don't know. We're we're gonna be talking more about Hunter Green and Nicola Dola next year. Very interesting in Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, at the moment. Uh and we'll see. Maybe Graham Ashcraft can come together. But on that note, the reason I wanted to 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 bring that up very quickly, because I know we're gonna I'm gonna do who will win the World Series. Don't forget, I, I have my guy. I have my team. All right. Okay. Uh, I I want to get to to exciting rookies, but before we do that. It's time for some wild thoughts, fast. And I know, mm -hmm. I know you definitely, without a doubt, have a wild thought for me. No wild thought. I'm sorry. No wild thought. You Wait, know, seriously? I don't, you know, I don't have all my all my thoughts are tame. Uh, all my thoughts are tame. You could you could theoretically you could theoretically take my thought from earlier about all the divisions being brought into one as That's my not wild, wild at all. That's how the actual baseball was. <laughs> baseball yeah, okay, was that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So wild. Let's just return baseball to what it was. I think, okay, I got a wild, wild. We shouldn't call we it. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. We're putting the wrong emphasis in the wrong syllable for home run. That's my wild thought. What? 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 It should be like, it should be a home run. Because what is it literally? Right? Oh what gosh. is it literally? It's a run that you got because you touched home. It's a home run. You know what? From this day on, I'm never saying home run again. You just did. <laughs> No, that was it. That was the last one. You're never going to hear it. It's You're a home what? run. Huh? It's so bad. It's, it's so much run. worse the way you say that. It's true, though. You might it's, as well say it's, Homer. It, you should say huh? Homer, then. You shouldn't say the home uh, run. I could I could get behind Homer, but it's also a home run. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me. I think it's the shrug that you're giving with it. The home run. <laughs> Oh Lord. Um uh what I, I I don't really have a, a wild thought today. However, I oh I already used that one. Okay. Today's is actually in in the style of what we're talking about here. Um I think it would be really fun if you had kind of a spin the wheel of rookies. And what I mean by that is you have you have the rookies who did not uh to not play in the top five amount of games. And it's not due to injury. If they're just in, involved in the team, right? Not sent to the minors, a part of the uh, the roster. That if you're not in the top five, they get thrown into like a bingo ball. And the team with the uh, the best record gets one that pops out. Okay. And you can lose your rookies if you're not starting them is the point I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're, it's kind of similar to the um, uh, the transfer portal that we came up with a couple of weeks ago. The transfer portal. Oh, well, that's the lending of the team. I mean, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, KC, a buy. You didn't start this guy. You don't get him anymore. He's not on your team. Oh, so it's like even more. It's 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 even more intense. Rule five. It's rule yeah. one, two, three, and four. If you don't it's even, uh, I will make it even fairer. If you do not hit a certain threshold of plate appearances or innings. Um, or days on the roster. That's better. Yeah. Then they get in, entered into the into the yeah. ball pit. <laughs> yeah, to the ball pit, and it has to be a ball pit. It has to be has to like be a ball a, pit. Be, we need we need like a golden retriever to go in and pick out its favorite ball. Yeah. So who cho who chooses it? I would say it's the the Bat Boy for the Durham Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, good. good. We're on the same page, then. We're on the same page. Uh, all right. Um, one last thing I do want to say before I go into who I think the, the will win the World Series. There are a lot of exciting rookies right now. I uh, and these are pitchers that came up. Not not hitters. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about hitters. Uh, exciting rookies. This pitchers that have recently have come up. Well, you can if you want to prepare that. I uh, Ryan Nelson, Dre Jameson, Luis Ortiz. Hayden Wisniewski. You, you can even throw in some Ronzi Contreras in here, some Hunter Brown. Obviously, Nick Lodolo doing great things. We actually even have Spencer Strider, who, uh, according to Reddit, this is from Hazelark, 
um, user Hazelark says, Spencer Strider has become the fastest pitcher in MLB history by innings to reach 200 strikeouts in a season, surpassing mm -hmm. Randy Johnson's record of 130.2 innings as Spencer Strider did 130. As a rookie, he did this. Unbelievable. The, we are we are witnessing a lot of really fun guys. I mean, we saw last year like Al Camino. We saw Shimmy Clanahan. I remember even having a conversation in 2021 about how a lot of the rookie pitchers were disappointing. Hmm. And then, of course, McClanahan and Manoa came out of that. Um, you can say that Logan Webb, in a way, had that breakout and was in the same fashion. But this is – we're seeing a lot of pitchers right now. George Kirby could be thrown into this. Logan, Webb, Logan Gilbert last sure. year as well. Um, but uh, – we're seeing these high velocity guys, Ryan Nelson throwing 95, 96, Dre Jameson doing kind of the same, but also pushing a little bit. Luis Ortiz right now, if you were qualified, would have the fastest four seamer in the majors at 99 miles per hour. Mm. Um, Hayden Wesneski coming in and throwing those beautiful breakers. Uh, Ron C. Contreras, obviously, you know that name. Hunter Brown doing amazing things for the Astros. Who is your favorite of the bunch here? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I, originally, I was going to say Spencer Strider, but I do wonder. Uh, we talked a little bit about like the Wasker Noah path, and like it is awesome to see that dominance. It's awesome to see the kind of personality that he has and the kind of quadzilla and, you mm -hmm. know, just kind of shoving it down your throat. Um, but I do kind yeah. of like the breadth of repertoire might be a little bit bigger for Lodolo, which might mm. lead me to like him a little bit more. Interesting. Um, I will say with Inoa, he did not have the fastball that Strider has. That's like a top 10 pitch in baseball. And then also, the yeah, Strider's sorry. Oh. But, but yeah, I see the what you're saying about two pitch. Mix. Just, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I understand that. Um, I mean, of these young ones here, the one that I think is completely un uh, under the radar, I mean, Dre Jameson and Luis Ortiz each are, I cannot wait to see them in 2023. Uh, I'm happy the Pirates are allowing Luis Ortiz to pitch it out uh, the rest of the way. And it would get a little bit more experience from him. He's going against the Yankees, I believe, actually tonight or tomorrow. It might be tomorrow. Um, but, uh, yeah, keep an eye on these guys. Oh, I think it's Luis Ortiz tonight. I don't know what happened. Okay. There's, Can't there's wait to watch it. Other ones. There's Joe Ryan's a rookie. Oh, is he still um, technically a rookie? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, right. You're right. He only had five games in uh, in September last year. Absolutely. Uh, Bailey Ober hopefully will get more next year. Aaron Ashby. Definitely mm -hmm. read Detmers. Um, yep. Lots of exciting pitching rookies, and it speaks really uh, well for the future ahead. Um, but all right, we got a few minutes left. Fast, I guess I got to do this, huh? Yeah. Um, would you like to tell everybody what teams I cannot choose? Uh, no, I don't have it right in front of me. Um, but I can guess who those are. You teams serious are. right now? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> I gave you. I gave you the notes. Unbelievable. Who doesn't read the notes? It's always uh -huh. the same place, Fast. It's always in the same exact place. It's the same we link every it. week. We, we got to pin it. it. You haven't. Oh, my. You don't have a book. All right, we it's the same. It. <laughs> no. uh, all right. So the teams that we've done so far, the Marlins, the O's, the Brewers, the Mets, the Guardians, the Braves, the Mariners, the Astros, the Yankees, the Padres, the Dodgers, the Cardinals. And then last week, I believe I did the Tampa Bay Rays. So, Nick. You did the Jays. You did the Jays I did the Jays. So it was yeah. Rays, then Jays, not updated. Yeah. Uh, who who is your uh, World Series winner this year? You're reading it from the 19, sorry, 9 13 run of the show. Um, uh, I am going to yeah, choose <laughs> the Chicago White Sox, who are only four games back in the division at this moment against the Guardians. And at the very least, you know, when we talk about September and October and November, really October and November, we talk about the pitching staff and Lance Lynn and Dylan sees at the top of it. Oh, that might be a one, two punch that can kill Luke. Lucas Giolito, obviously not the top of his game, sitting 91 at times, 92, not the Lucas Giolito of old, but as a number three, number four, maybe that can work. And then you have this offense and this offense is strange because you don't have a single player who has hit 18 home runs this year for the White Sox. Oh. Very strange. But then you have w WRC plus of 141 from Jose Abreu, 157 from Eloy Jimenez, 128 from Andrew Vaughn. Danny Mendick has a 125, if you can believe that. Um, Tim Anderson will be back and healthy in time. Uh, Liam Hendricks is a great reliever. Uh, you have good elements in the Chicago yeah. White Sox team. We have felt that they should take down the Guardians at some point. 
You got two weeks left. Who knows what will happen here? But the Chicago White Sox, if they make it into the playoffs, they will be a tough, tough team to beat. So my pick this week is the Chicago White Sox. And of course, they have the best broadcaster, Jason Benetti, the Mr. Rogers Benetti. of baseball. If you got him in your in your in your in your wheelhouse, then you know anything can happen. Yeah, hundred percent. Anything, hundred percent. Good call, good prediction there. Um, but Nick, we did it. Another it's successful time? episode. Did we do it? it? Is. We oh, did man. It. I'm going to miss we all of you. Another. I'm going to miss yeah. you all so much. But don't worry. Yeah. Don't fear. We'll be back next Monday and Tuesday for uh, uh, On the Corner and the Nick and Alex Baseball Show. But that's going to do it for this episode. This is not. You don't do this. We're, you don't do this. I do. This is my show. I tried to steal it. I tried to steal it like you did. <laughs> no, like it can't. I will always. Yeah, you got to be quicker. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of the Nick and Alex Baseball Show. Thank you, everybody, for watching this live. But my name is Nick Pollock. And I'm Alex Fast, and we'll talk to you guys next week.